Praise the Lord, everyone. My name is Minister Justin Dillard. Come on, let's clap our hands for the Lord on today. Thank the Lord for giving us a wonderful opportunity to breathe. Thank the Lord for waking us up this morning, starting us on our way, put food on our table, clothes on our back. We thank the Lord for the sunshine. Praise the Lord. We thank the Lord for a roof over our heads. And I thank the Lord for you taking the time out of your schedule to tune in to one more message from the Lord. Praise the Lord. I would like to open up with a an opening scripture followed by a prayer. The scripture will be coming from Numbers, the 26th chapter, verse 10. And this chapter and verse is going to be instrumental to the message today. Numbers 26 verse 10. And the earth opened her mouth and swallowed them up together with Korah. When that company died, what time the fire devoured two hundred and fifty men. And they began became a sign. Again the scripture is Numbers the 26th chapter, verse 10. And the earth opened her mouth and swallowed them up together with Korah. When that company died, what time the fire devoured 250 men and they became a sign. From the Bible Dictionary, Korah Kor, a grandson of Kohath, who incited a rebellion against Moses and Aaron in the wilderness. Korath and his followers were swallowed by the earth as punishment for their sin. Numbers 16, 30-33. May God bless the readers, hearers, and doers of His Holy Word. Let us bow for a brief moment of prayer. Heavenly Father, in the name of Jesus, Lord, we thank you for allowing us to witness another Veterans Day this past Friday. Lord, we thank you for all of the veterans. Lord, we thank you for our uncles, aunts, parents, grandparents, great-grandparents, and ancestors, friends, loved ones, siblings who have served in the military. Lord, I ask that you will please bless them, comfort them. Some have lost their lives. We understand that Veterans Day is commemorating those who have lost their lives and also those who are yet living. Lord, we thank you, Lord, for those who have sacrificed their lives and put them on the line to serve this country. Lord, we just give you the praise, the honor, and the glory. And on today, Lord, as we learn about Joshua and how he served your people and also Moses. We ask, Lord, that you would please open up our hearts so that we will be obedient and be intentional in everything that we do. Please help us to learn from those who are our elders. Lord, please help us to mark and to take note of the things they did because we can really learn from those who walked or who led ahead of us. Lord, we pray for every leader. We pray that you will please touch them, Lord. 
to remember that this battle is not theirs, but it belongs to the Lord. Please help us all, Lord, to fight the good fight of faith, to run well, to remember that this is a marathon, not a sprint. Please help us to run this race with patience and let patience have her perfect work in us so that we will be lacking nothing. Lord, we pray for those, Lord, who are on the battlefield as we speak right now. We pray for them, Lord. We pray that you will please protect them. Please comfort their families. Lord, we ask you to please keep you. We ask you to please help them to keep you first in all of their undertakings. Lord, we thank you that we don't have to wait till the battle is over. We can shout now because in the end, we're going to win. Lord, we just give you the praise, the honor, and the glory for what you've done and what you're doing in our lives. And in Jesus' name, we pray, amen, amen, and amen. I would like to invite you to the scripture that I will be talking to and talking about today that is found in Exodus the 24th chapter it's the 24th chapter 9 through 11 and it reads then went up Moses and Aaron Nadab and Abihu and 70 of the elders of Israel and they saw the God of Israel, and there was under his feet, as it were, a paved work of a sapphire stone, and as it were the body of heaven in its in his clearness. Verse 11. And upon the nobles of the children of Israel he laid not his hand. Also they saw God in did eat and drink. May God bless the readers, hearers, and doers of his holy word. The title that we'll be laboring with on today is God will bless us when we listen and obey Him. God will bless us when we listen and obey Him. That's the title. God will bless us when we listen and obey Him. And the objective is God's, God works through people. God works through people. God works through people. Now I mentioned earlier in Numbers 10, Numbers 26 verse 10 about the sons of Korah. And God dealt with them. The earth opened up and swallowed them and everyone who was with them. Those were the individuals who decided to come against and rise up against Moses. And let me stick a pin in that thought because I'm going to come back to that thought when it comes to uh, Joshua in the battle of Ai and Achan. So just keep that in your thought. Keep that in the back of your mind. In Numbers, the Bible from the Bible Handbook, the Israelites wandered for many years in the wilderness of Sinai. Numbers 26, 1 through 56. All able-bodied Israelite males 20 years old and above are counted again at the end of 40 years of wandering in the wilderness. What stood out to me is it doesn't matter how 
well you start out is how you finish and it says at the end of 40 years of wandering in the wilderness. This census is to be used as the basis of assigning land to the tribes after they conquer the territory of the Canaanites. Numbers 1, 1 through 3. And here is a quote that I saw in a post on the internet. The difference between a boss and a leader. There's a difference between a boss and a leader. A boss uses people. The leader cares about helping them develop. There's a difference between a boss and a leader. A boss uses people. The leader cares about helping them develop. From the Bible Handbook, a summary for Exodus. God's glory and communes with him for days on Mount Sinai. Moses enters the glory of God and communes with him 40 days on Mount Sinai. Now, Mount, now um, 40 days is a number for proba probationary period. It's the probationary period. Remember, Jesus was in the wilderness for 40 days and 40 nights. It rained 40 days and 40 nights with the ark um, in, in, um, in the flood. Forty is a number for a probationary period. Mount Sinai, coming from the Bible handbook. When Moses received the Ten Commandments from the Lord on Mount Sinai, Exodus 19, 1-25, he must have recalled his burning bush experience and call from the Lord in the same location several months before. Exodus 3, 1-3. Mount Sinai was also known as Horeb. Exodus 3, verse 1. This rocky, barren mountain peak in the wilderness of Sinai is about one mile high. Now from, I would like to read Exodus 24 verses 9 through 11 one more time. Then went up Moses and Aaron, Nadab and Ebahu, and seventy of the elders of Israel. And they saw the God of Israel, and there was under his feet, as it were, a paved work of a sapphire stone. And it were, and as it were the body of heaven in his clearness. And upon the nobles of the children of Israel he laid not his hand. Also they saw God and did eat and drink. From the Tony Evans commentary. The Lord let these men see something of his glory in a manner like what Moses would later experience in the more dramatic fashion. Israel, we must note, only saw God when they worshiped at his invitation, responded to his revelation and revelation and received the blood of his consecration. Here's what I got from Here's what I got from, um, actually what I got from, um, the Men of the Bible devotional. The Men of the Bible devotional. Exodus 24, 12 and 13. And the Lord said to Moses, unto Moses, Come up to me into the mount and be there, and I will give thee tables of stone 
and a law and commandments which I have written that thou mayest teach them. And Moses rose up and his minister Joshua and Moses went up into the mount of God. Men of the Bible devotional, you're a captain general of the Hebrews under Moses, his right hand man, when your commander tells you he wants you to, to accompany him up to the holy mountain of God, where God will supply the stone tablet containing his law. Scary? You bet, but frightening as it would be to approach such a powerful God going right up to the cloud in which he appears, what does the invitation to accompany Moses say about Joshua's character? A lot. One day Joshua, the son of Nun, would become Moses' successor, but not yet. In this moment, his duty was to support Moses as the leader of God's people. He had exhibited his faithfulness in the past by fighting and defeating the Amalekites, just as Moses had ordered, Exodus 17 verse 9. Now here he was closer in proximity to God than any other man except Moses. Are you second or third or fourth in command at work or church or in your small group? Are you fully supportive of the man of God has put in charge for this particular season? Always faithful to help him carry out the vision God has given him? If so, God will bless you too. God will bless us when we listen and obey Him. That's the title again. God will bless us when we listen and obey Him. And the objective, God works through people. Now coming from Joshua, let's, let's go back to Joshua, the sixth chapter. Joshua was against Jericho. There were the walls of Jericho. These high walls. How was Joshua going to defeat the walls of Jericho? Joshua was given the directions, the information, the command to take your men and march around once for six days. And on the seventh day, have seven priests to have seven ram homes to march around seven times and on the seventh time have the men, have the priests blow the horn and the walls will come tumbling down. Also they had to shout. I would like to go to that scripture in um, Joshua the sixth chapter. Joshua the sixth chapter. Verse, march around the city once with all the armed men. Do this for six days. Have seven priests carry trumpets of ram horns in front of the ark. On the seventh day, march around the city seven times with the priests blowing the trumpets. When you hear them sound a loud blast on the trumpets, have all the people give a loud shout. Then the wall of the city will collapse and the people will go up, every man straight in. See, God is trying, God wants to develop victories underneath our belts. See, the, the more we trust in Him, the greater the assignment God will give to us, and the greater the victory. Will be. 
Now let's go to the seventh chapter. The seventh chapter. It says, But the Israelites acted unfaithfully in regards to the devoted thing, Achan, son of Carmi, the son of Zimri, the son of Zerah, of the tribe of Judah, took some of them, so the Lord's anger burned against Israel. Now Joshua sent man from Jericho to Ai, which is near Beth, Avon, to the east of Bethel, and told them, Go up and spy out the region. So the man went up and spied out Ai. When they returned to Joshua, they said, Not all the people will have to go up against Ai. Send two or three thousand men to take it, and do it, and do not weary all the people, for only a few men are there. So about three thousand men went up, but they were routed by the men of Ai, who killed about thirty-six of them. They chased the Israelites from the city gate as far as the stone quarries and struck them down on the slopes. At this the hearts of the people melted and became like water. Now Joshua is going to get to the bottom of the situation of why they lost. And I'm going to be picking up at the 20th verse. It's true, Achan answered, I sinned and disobeyed the Lord God of Israel. Verses 21 and 22. While we were in Jericho, I saw a beautiful Babylonian robe, 200 pieces of silver, and a gold bar that weighed the same as 50 pieces of gold. I wanted them for myself, so I took them. I dug a hole under my tent and hid the silver, the gold, and the robe. Joshua told some people to run to Achan's tent where they found the silver, the gold, and the robe. They brought them back and put them in front of the, the sacred chest. So Joshua and the rest of the Israelites could see them. Then everyone took Achan and the things he had stole to Trouble Valley. They also took also his sons and daughters, his cattle, donkey, and sheep, his tent, and everything else that belonged to him. See, God beforehand told um, Joshua that he would show him who was the culprit in while they lost the battle of Ai. And so God tells, the Lord tells Joshua to bring all the tribes in and to expect them. Verse 25, Joshua said, Achan, you cause us a lot of trouble. Now the Lord is paying you back with the same kind of trouble. The people of Israel then stoned to death Achan and his family. They made a fire and burned the bodies together with what Achan had stolen and all his possessions. They covered the remains with a big pile of rocks, which is still there. Then the Lord stopped being angry with Israel. That's how the place came to be called Trouble Valley. See, the Lord did, does not play games with people. And sometimes we think that we can get away, but see how God exposed see the light exposes things and we're seeing a lot of things being exposed today where it comes to uh everybody and everything's being exposed praise the lord we're really seeing what things really are just turn on the news and look around in our communities we're seeing uh what's really being exposed praise Things are, are, are becoming exposed of how people build buildings or or um, what people they feel that they have to. Some people feel that they are um, 
untouchable. And um, we even see in, in fights these days, in fights these days, everyone always finds their match. Everyone always finds their match. Everyone meets their match. But I would like to go back to the title. We are blessed when we listen and obey God. We are blessed when we listen and obey God. God works through people. Let's go back to um, actually uh, verse uh, Exodus, Exodus chapter 24, verse 9. Then went up Moses and Aaron, Nabab and Abihu, and seventy of the elders of Israel. And they saw the God of Israel, and there was under his feet, as it were, a paved work of a sapphire stone, and it were, and as it were, the body of heaven in his clearness, in his clearness. And upon the nobles of the children of Israel he laid not his hand, also they saw God. And did eat and drink. God always gives a remnant of those who see. Those who hear from him. Praise the Lord. Praise the Lord. Now I would like to read what it says from. Um, I have this book. This life application book right here. Life application Bible. And I would like to read what it says about Joshua and his character. It says, this is Life Application, New International Version. It says, one of the greatest challenges facing leaders is to replace themselves, training others to become leaders. Many outstanding accomplishments have been started by someone with great ability whose life or career ended before the vision became reality. The fulfillment of that dream then became the responsibility of that person's successor. Death is the ultimate deadline for leadership. One of the best tests of our leadership is our willingness and ability to train another for our position. Moses made an excellent decision when he chose Joshua as his assistant. That choice was later confirmed by God himself when he instructed Moses to commission Joshua as his successor. Numbers 27, 15 through 23. Joshua had played a key role in the exodus from Egypt. Introduced as the field general of Israel's army, he was the only person allowed to accompany Moses part way up the mountain when Moses received the law. Joshua and Caleb were the only two among the twelve scouts to bring back an encouraging report after being sent into the promised land the first time. Other references show him to have been Moses' constant shadow. His basic training was living with Moses. Experiencing firsthand what it meant to lead God's people. This was modeling at its best. Who is your Moses? Who is your Joshua? Are you part of the chain of God's ongoing work in the world? You are modeling yourself after others and others are patterning their lives after you how important is god to those you want to be like to those who are watching you see god's god reflected in every area of your life ask god to lead you to a trustworthy mothis Ask him to make you a good Joshua. 
strengths. Here are some of the strengths and accomplishments of Joshua. Moses' assistant and successor. I would like to show you what this book looks like I'm reading from. Looks like this book right here. Moses' assistant and successor. One of only two adults who experienced Egyptian slavery and lived to enter the promised land. Led the Israelites into their God-given homeland. Brilliant military strategist. Faithful to ask God's direction and the challenges he faced. Lessons from his life. Effective leadership is often the product of good preparation and encouragement. The person after whom we pattern ourselves will have a definite effect on us. A person committed to God provides the best model for us. Vital statistics. Where? Egypt. The wilderness of Sinai. Canaan. The promised land. Occupation. Special assistant to Moses. Warrior. Leader. Relative. Father. None. Contemporaries. Moses. Caleb. Miriam. Aaron. Key verses. Moses did as the Lord commanded him. He took Joshua and had him stand before Eleazar the priest and the whole assembly. Then he laid hands, then he laid his hands on him and commissioned him as the Lord had instructed through Moses. Numbers 27, 22, and 23. Joshua is also mentioned in Exodus 17 and then it gives a list of scriptures. Here's the book again that I was reading from, the Life Application Bible, the NIV version. What did you get from this story? What did you get from this information and from the scripture? What I got from this scripture is we are blessed when we obey and listen to God. Everybody cannot be a leader. But every leader has a story and a reason why they do certain things. As a leader, I learned from what happened to Korah to what happened to Achan that we may have people that will rise up against us, but God has the final say-so. It's no way of getting around it. It's always going to be someone that rises up against us. Amen. But God has the final say so. We thank the Lord that when Jesus came, he had many people to rise up against him, but God had the final say so. They ridiculed him. They did not even want to accept him in his home town. Is that Joseph's boy? Is that Mary's child? Jesus of Nazareth? Even one of the disciples turned Jesus over for silver. The Pharisees and the Sadducees always were trying to discredit Jesus. But we thank the Lord that Jesus was faithful despite and in spite of his opposition. We thank the Lord, praise the Lord, for being faithful in the wilderness. Jesus never complained. We thank the Lord for not yielding to temptation. We thank the Lord for sitting on the right hand of the throne of God interceding for us. We thank the Lord to us for 
coming, living, and dying on the cross and at Calvary. Hanging his head for you and I, and God raised him from the dead. My brothers and sisters, I thank the Lord for you taking the time out um, for sharing this time with me and this fellowship, learning about Joshua, the son of Nun, and also about Moses. And Joshua learned a lot from Moses. We can learn a lot from leaders, what to do, what not to do. Praise the Lord. Praise the Lord, praise the Lord. If there's someone out there who is thinking about giving their life over to the Lord, trying out Jesus. I heard the song, song sung, try Jesus, he's all right. I done tried him and he's all right. Here's your opportunity to repent, come clean, ask the Lord to please forgive you for your sin. Here's your opportunity to trust him. Is there one? Is there two? I'd like to play a song. Brother Anthony Williams is going to sing a song, Running Back. And it's going to be a duet. And it's originally by commissioned Fred Hammond. <laughs> who have decided to follow Jesus on today, who have repented, come to Jesus as they are, and who believe in Jesus and that he can make a difference in your life, to help you to make sound decisions. We thank the Lord for the Holy Spirit coming in those individuals and indwelling in them because they have accepted Jesus as their personal Savior. That's the best choice that they could ever make in their lives. And we thank the Lord for him coming, living, dying, and for God raising him from the dead. My brothers and sisters, I thank the Lord for you one more time for joining me in this fellowship. I thank the Lord for our brother Ann. And um, I just give the Lord all the praise, honor, and glory for what he's doing in my life and in your life. Praise the Lord. Now to the benediction. May God bless and protect you. May God smile on you and be gracious to you. May the Lord show you his favor and give you his peace. And everyone said, Amen, Amen, and Amen.